move the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says that the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equivalent to the sum of the square of the length of the other two sides. Or just that. Now we draw a big now we draw a triangle. It's too small. Now we mark these sides. This let's call it A. This is a right angle. This is C because the hypotenuse is opposite of the right angle. And this is B. We have no more options, basically, because of that. Now, we draw a perpendicular line, the length of C. Now, we connect these points. Not to C, because it's a length of C. Then, we draw a straight line from A or to here, the length of B. Then, we connect these two. We, know, we also know this is a right angle too. Now, now we're gonna mark the angles. This angle and this angle. But then since these aren't the same, we got to mark this oh, differently. Now, this is also an angle, or probably gonna be. But we don't know if it's the same angle as any of these. So let's just mark it with three. Now let's label them. Let's call this Z, the one we're trying to figure out. Y and X. Now, we're gonna, now we're gonna find out, we're gonna try to find out if Z is equivalent to X. The equation would be now, Z plus 90, since there was a right angle there, plus Y is equivalent to 180. It's 180 because it's a straight line. And you know what straight lines mean. 180. Now we have to, now we have to put all the Y and 90 on a right of the equal sign. Then it becomes Z is equivalent to 180 minus 90 minus Y. Now you could drop the 180 so then it becomes Z is equivalent to 90 minus Y. And we, but since we don't know what Y is, we're going to try to find out what Y is using this big triangle. This triangle here. <clears throat> and now we are going to now we are going to do this. Y plus ninety. Another right angle here, not that one. Plus X, that one there. See? Now equals five hundred eighty. Now we have to put every one. Now we have to put 90 and x on the other side of the equal sign. And then it becomes y is equivalent to 180 minus 90 minus x. Inverse operations. Then we could drop the 180 again. Now it's 90 minus x. And let's plug it in with z. Z is equivalent to 90 minus, now instead, now we know that, now Z, we know that Z is 90 minus Y, right? So we write that. So then Z, but then we have to convert Y, so then it becomes 90 minus 90 minus X.
Now let's think of this as a, a cashier machine. Um, a cashier machine won't just act continuously just minus the numbers like that. Instead, it'll add these two numbers. And so it becomes, and the cashier machine would do this. Now, if we're gonna lift the parenthesis, this is a minus sign. So then, this is technically going to be, if we lift the parenthesis, this is going to be, rever that has to be reversed. So then it becomes 90 plus x. Then we know, all know what 90 minus 90 is. Zero. Now it's only plus x. Zero plus x. No. Drop the addition sign at zero, it's x. Now we know that z is equivalent to x. So get rid of this thing. The mark it's different. Well, it's the same. Now we can. Now instead of z, it's x. And and since we know that this is a basically the same triangle, we know that this is a right angle. This has to be y, and this a. Now, we go over here. The area of a trapezoid is, is the height multiplied by the length, the length, length of the, length of the two parallel sides combined divided by two. But then, we already know the height and L. But then we already know H and L's. So then it becomes a H, you know it's A plus B. And we tilt it like this, because that's how it's supposed to be, because I somehow tilted it a bit. A plus B. A plus B. Now we could drop the multiplication sign, because this means multiplication. And then the length of these two sides combined is A plus B again. Divide by 2. Now, let's do this. Now, let's do the multiplication. A times A would be a squared. Let's write that down. A times B would be AB or A times B. Plus B times A would be another AB. Now we know that AB is equivalent to BA because of the communicative property of multiplication. And then we have to do, and then B times B is B squared. Then divide by 2. Now we are going to. Now we are going to do the same thing except, di except divided, a little divided. A, now the, now the specific area of this big trapezoid thingy is that's for is the area of these three combined triangles now the area of this triangle would be a b divided by two plus this this triangle is c squared divided by two now, this is this triangle is the same as the first triangle as we proved before. And then we write the same thing. So then, so then let's 
So now we write the it in parentheses. We drop two with the love and then you just have to paste it. And then let's go back here. We simplify it again. 2AB because 2 of them. And then we simplify this again. 2AB again. Now we go to here. Now let's see. Now let's compare them. A squared plus 2AB plus B squared divided by 2 is equivalent, must be equivalent to C squared plus 2AB because we were doing the same area on the trap room, on the trap, the same trapezoid. Now, we could drop the denominator of two since they are the same. And it become, and we could drop the parenthesis two. We could drop the 2AB for each one of them. It's there in both cases. And then it becomes, and then we have just proved that the, that the length of the hypotenuse squared is equivalent to the sum of the square of the other two sides. See, see how cool it is? And I'm done.